Detective Angela approaches Constantine, a demon hunter, to help her investigate her twin sister's mysterious death. As he digs deeper, he realizes that demons are trying to enter the human world. The movie begins with a narration set in the aftermath of the Second World War. In Mexico, a scavenger stumbles upon a concealed hole in the floor of a dilapidated church. Inside the hole, he discovers an ancient spear shrouded in a Nazi flag, believing it to be the one that pierced Jesus Christ. As he unwraps the flag, he is overtaken by a mysterious force. Subsequently, he begins to walk toward the road, where he is abruptly struck by a car. In a startling twist, the car is wrecked upon impact, but the man remains unscathed. A mark appears on his hand where he held the spear, and his friend watches this unfold in terror as the man rises and resumes his journey. The narrative then shifts to Los Angeles, where a mother was making breakfast for her ill daughter. As she brings the meal to her daughter's room, she is horrified to see her daughter snarling on the ceiling. The family quickly contacts Father Hennessy, a renowned exorcist, who lacks the courage to confront this demonic possession. Consequently, he calls upon John Constantine, a skeptical occult specialist, and his apprentice, Chaz. Upon arrival, they find the terrified family and the daughter bound to her bed. John opens a window to let in sunlight, which the girl resists. He then places an amulet on her forehead, causing her skin to burn and for her to convulse and scream as he recites an incantation. Shortly after, the girl ceases to convulse, and a shadowy figure emerges from her neck, seemingly ready to burst out. Sensing the severity of the situation, John requests a mirror from the family, which he places above the girl. He then breaks a window and instructs Chaz to move the car, and he orders everyone to close their eyes while he performs the exorcism. Despite his warning, a man peeks and begins to scream as his hair turns gray. John compels the concealed demon to gaze into the mirror and traps it within. He then hurls the mirror out of the window, where it lands on Chaz's car and shatters. Before leaving, John spots a sketch of the Spear of Destiny, the same one from the film's opening and takes it. As he departs, he informs Hennessy that the exorcism was not routine and vaguely hints at an impending significant event. In the subsequent scene, Detective Angela confesses to a priest about killing a criminal, and she questions her uncanny ability to locate these criminals and the precise timing of her actions. The priest suggests that it's part of God's plan, and later Angela dreams of waking up in a hospital and hearing the name Isabel. She follows the voice to the roof and jumps through the glass into the pool and wakes up in her bed. The next day, John learns that he has terminal lung cancer from years of smoking, and meanwhile, Angela investigates a suicide case at the same hospital. She was heartbroken to find that the victim was her twin sister Isabel, a mental patient. Despite claims that Isabel jumped from the roof, Angela, knowing her sister's strong Catholic faith, refuses to believe that she would ever off herself. At home, John receives a visit from his friend Beeman, who brings a collection of supernatural items for his mission. John shares about the demon that attempted to cross into the human world, which Beeman promises to investigate. Later, both John and Angela coincidentally visit the same church, and Angela wishes to give Isabel a Catholic funeral, but the priest refuses because Isabel offed herself. Concurrently, John converses with Gabriel, a half-angel, asking for an extension of his life. Despite his efforts in banishing demons, Gabriel dismisses his request, stating it's insufficient. In another location, Hennessy stiffs through newspapers, hearing the articles in his mind. He pauses at the news of Isabel's death, sensing something unusual. That night, Angela reviews her sister's death footage and hears Isabel mention John's name, and she decides to find him. Meanwhile, John, while smoking on the street, is attacked by an insect-covered demon. A fight ensues, ending when a van hits the demon, killing the insects. John then visits Midnight's Club, a hangout for half-breeds, and he meets the owner, Pop Midnight, a powerful occultist who remains neutral in the heaven-hell conflict. John shares his encounter with the demon, but Midnight, citing the rules, doesn't believe him. Their conversation is interrupted by Balthazar, a half-breed demon, who teases John while flipping a coin. John and Midnight have a tense exchange at the club, but Midnight insists on maintaining peace. Back home, Angela visits John, fearing her sister Isabella had been manipulated into doing something terrible. John dismisses her concerns as desperation for Isabel's salvation, 
and declines to help. However, he spots demons trailing Angela as she leaves, linking it to recent demonic activity. John follows Angela to warn her about the demons, but she dismisses the idea, only believing in heaven and hell. Suddenly, they find themselves in darkness, hearing eerie sounds of something flying overhead. John quickly lights a cloth, revealing the demons around them, which are incinerated instantly by the flame. John concludes that the demons were targeting Angela and not him. Following the encounter with the demons, John agrees to investigate Angela's case, and he decides to venture into hell to confirm if Isabel is there, which would validate Angela's fears about her sister's actions. In Angela's apartment, John immerses his feet in a basin of water and picks up her cat, looking into its eyes to connect with the supernatural realm, humorously concluding that all cats must be from hell. Suddenly, time freezes and John finds himself in hell, and he takes out Beeman's holy water for protection and navigates the infernal landscape, ignoring the surrounding demons. He spots Isabella on a cliffing edge and he calls out to her, but she throws her medical tag and leaps off the cliff. As John chases the tag and demons start to chase him, he grabs the tag and breaks the holy water on his chest, transporting him back to Angela's apartment. After confirming Angela's sister's shocking act through a medical tag, Hennessy secretly examines Isabel's body in the morgue and discovers an unusual matter on her wrist. In fear, he attempts to drink from his flask and various wine bottles in a liquor store but fails. He finally collapses and starts choking. With his final breath, Hennessy grabs a bottle opener and attempts to stab his own palm, and concurrently Balthazar appears, taking pleasure in Hennessy's suffering. Meanwhile, John confides in Angela about his ability to perceive supernatural beings, sense his youth, an ability that led his confused parents to commit him to a mental institution for treatment. John, feeling isolated and terrified, once attempted something drastic. He claims to have been officially dead for a few minutes, but in hell, where time moves slower, it felt like a lifetime. And their conversation is then interrupted when Angela learns of Hennessy's death. At the scene, John spots a bloody symbol, identical to the one on Isabel's wrist, and sends it to Beeman for analysis. John and Angela visit Isabel's hospital room for clues. Believing in the strong bond between twins, John encourages Angela to recall any helpful information. She remembers their childhood secret communication method of fogging up windows. Breathing on a window reveals a message, Corinthians 17. Later, as they drive away, Beeman explains over the phone that Corinthians 17 refers to the prophecy of Memon, the devil's son, who aims to plunge humanity into eternal darkness and establish his own hellish kingdom surpassing even that of Satan's. Memon's rise requires a potent psychic and a divine entity. As Beeman elaborates on this theory, he senses something wrong and abruptly ends the call. Suddenly, insects pour out of his eyes, and John and Angela hurry to him, but they were too late, and Beeman was dead. Meanwhile, a man carrying the Spear of Destiny reaches a highway, hijacks a car after killing its driver, and heads toward Los Angeles. Back at Beeman, Angela confesses she had visions as a child, but suppressed them to avoid being labeled insane like her sister. And this caused divisions to fade over time. Feeling remorseful, Angela asks John to help her reconnect with the spiritual world, and despite John's warnings about the irreversible nature of the process, Angela was determined. John submerged her in a bathroom filled with water, holding her under until she struggles for breath. As Angela drowns, time seems to slow down for her, and she undergoes a terrifying journey to hell, regaining her powers in the process. Reviving Angela senses something amiss and rushes to Beeman's office, where she discovers Balthazar's coin. Realizing Balthazar's involvement, John confronts him, demanding an explanation. Following a confrontation, it's revealed that the Spear of Destiny is the divine key for Memon's entry into the human world, and Angela is his chosen host. John, upset by this, shoots the person that revealed it and departs with Angela. Soon after, an unknown figure destroys Balthazar and abducts Angela, leaving John powerless. In desperation, John seeks Midnight's help to use a special chair. Initially, Midnight accuses John of disrupting the heaven-hell balance, but relents after hearing about the crisis. They then start a procedure where John is electrocuted on a chair, triggering a vision. 
John sees a Mexican man heading to a hospital, a swarming with half-breed demons awaiting Memon. Armed with this knowledge, John and Chaz formulate a rescue plan for Angela. Angela is left at a hospital pool where she meets a Mexican man and her attempts to shoot him fail. And soon John and Chaz arrive and Chaz bless the holy tank with a holy cross while John faces the demons. After the blessing, John triggers the sprinklers, spreading holy water that weakens the demons, allowing him to defeat them. They then find the Mexican man's dead body in the pool room and suddenly the water boils and Angela, now possessed, emerges. A tough battle between her and John ensues, who eventually gained control. With Chaz's help, they restrain Angela and start the incantation, and it appears to work as Angela returns to normal. They then continue to chant until the demon vanishes. Tragically, Chaz is violently thrown around and killed, leaving John devastated. Determined to seek justice, John uses his tattoos and an incantation to reveal a hidden being. Gabriel appears, disclosing her role at aiding Memon. She expresses resentment toward God's favoritism for humans and plans to unleash hell on Earth to test humanity's worthiness. Gabriel throws John aside and prepares to stab Angela with the spearhead to release Memon. In a desperate move, John prays and uses a glass shard to end his life, and as he bleeds, time freezes, immobilizing Gabriel. Lucifer then appears to take John to hell, and John seizes this chance to inform Lucifer about Memon's impending arrival on Earth. Skeptical, Lucifer checks and finds Gabriel about to stab Angela to free Memon. Just before time resumes, Lucifer takes Angela away, attacks Gabriel and burns her wings, and sends Memon back to hell. After the ordeal, Lucifer orders John a life extension as a reward, but John declines, asking for Isabel's soul to be sent to heaven instead. Lucifer then agrees, but is shocked when John also starts ascending to heaven due to his selfless act. Angry, Lucifer removes John's cancer, hoping he'll sin again, and hopefully in the future, end up in hell. John then wakes up healed, retrieves the spearhead, and plans to leave with Angela. They were then stopped by Gabriel, who was now human, who hands John a gun, urging him to sin by shooting her. John simply punches her and leaves, and in the end, John gives Angela the Spear of Destiny, as it will be protected if it stays with her, and they part ways, promising to meet again. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video, watch our next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you on the next one.